Welcome back to Holland Vols Adventures, and this is the Georgia Traverse. Kind of. So what does it mean when I say this is the Georgia Traverse, kind of? So this is my first attempt at the Georgia Traverse. It's something I've been wanting to do for a while and uh, have been going through the planning of for a couple of months and got a chance to, to take a weekend away and go do it. Um, did it solo. Uh, I needed some time to just kind of get away from work and everything and um, do a little adventuring. And um, so what I want to start with is just a little bit about how I went about planning it. Um, the biggest resource I used was uh, a website. It's called georgiaoverland.com. Um, David, the gentleman that runs it, uh, years back had um, put together a trek um, consisting of county roads, state roads, forest service roads, highways, byways, you name it, that basically starts at the South Carolina-Georgia border meanders through the North Georgia mountains and then pops back out um, at the Alabama Georgia border. Um, so when I first started looking at it, uh, his site is great because one, you can download all of his maps for free. Um, not a lot of sites do that. And he's got a lot of time and effort um, built into this over, over the course of the years. Um, but it's free to download the maps. Um, I do highly recommend send him a donation through PayPal that he, he accepts donations. Um, send him 25 bucks to help support the site. He'll send you some stickers and decals and stuff. Really nice guy. Um, but the other nice thing that he's got going on is um, you'll find links on his page to uh, different state websites, um, uh, forestry websites that can tell you which roads are open, or which, you know, which roads are closed. There's a blog, you know, people that have done the trip to report back on which roads are closed. And I thought I did my due diligence of checking all the major roads and thoroughfares that I could find to make sure that at least the majority of it was open. Um, now I realize I did this in the off season and I figured there would probably be some seasonal closures. And I figured maybe one or two roads might be just closed for no apparent reason and, and nothing was posted about it. Um, so I started um, the journey in South Carolina and everything went really smoothly all the way up through the area called Charlie's um, Creek Trail, which has become a pretty popular four-wheeling destination. Um, on the other side of Charlie's Creek, um, that's when it started to get a little bit hit and miss. Um, I did find um, a couple roads um, that were closed that I knew were closed, and I knew it, I, I needed to plan around them. Um, uh, which again, just to sh you know, shout out there for Gaia Mapping or really any software that you want to use to help you find your way around areas when maybe the unplanned happens. Um, but uh, so when I uh, there there is when I started having some trouble um, when I got specifically to um, uh, Trey Mountain, uh, which I was really looking forward to. I heard a lot of great things about Trey Mountain. It actually mapped out some. Uh, um, some areas that I wanted to camp and unfortunately the road up traveling from east to west uh, 79 I think it was was closed which means I had to bypass basically all of Trey Mountain um, it put me ahead of time um, so actually I passed up um, the area I would have probably camped in for an area further down um, and so up until this point I'd really planned this video as being kind of a you know really cinematic adventure of my journey um, but after some more thought and thinking through some things and running into a few more closed roads, what I felt I would do um, instead is really just more of a tips and, and tricks, uh, suggestions kind of video um, to do the Georgia Traverse. Um, if you want to go see video of 200 plus miles of gravel road, there are plenty of YouTube videos out there that you can do that. So that horse has kind of been ridden. It's, it's, it's been done. Um, however, when I was doing my investigation and my research on the trip, I didn't find a lot of video on YouTube just about what to expect and how to plan for the journey. Um, and I call this a journey. It's not an off-road, an epic off-road adventure. Um, you know, it's 300 plus miles um, long. Um, 220 of it, some odd, is supposed to be unpaved. 
Due to the road closures, I would say to the point I stopped, I only traveled maybe 180 miles of, of off pavement um, because, of, because of a lot of the closures. Um, so what I'd like to do with this video, um, and I'm going to make myself small here, um, I'm going to try to just kind of walk you through what to plan for, what to expect, um, and then lastly, what you need to drive because that's also important. Um, so had a plan, uh, obviously first, and, and while I'm doing this, I'm going to just kind of throw up some of the highlight video um, of the trip. I'm not going to bore you with mile after mile of gravel. Uh, I'll just kind of show you some of the things that people generally want to see, at least that I was looking forward to doing when I was there. Um, so first and foremost, planning the trip, go to georgiaoverland.com, download the maps, and then start studying them. Um, go to his blog, read through it catch up on any road closures. I'm going to send him an email with some, with some, you know, all the road closures I ran into, um, go to the link, um, where you can actually go to the different websites to check for the state and federal road, clo road closures. Um, and then another thing I might do is just, uh, maybe just start doing some Google searches on Georgia Traverse. You're going to find a lot of, uh, vlogs and blogs and all sorts of things, uh, you know, about, um, where to go, what to see. Um, definitely go to hell in Georgia. That place is a trip. It's like a crazy rip off of some Swiss village <laughs> mixed with Gatlinburg. Uh, but definitely do that. Uh, but, uh, so go through the planning stages, you know, kind of make sure you know where you want to go about what you want to see. But here's where the biggest tip I can give you. Don't plan everything so much that you'll get disappointed if you don't get to it. And that's the, that's the trap I fell into. I planned this thing down to the T, everywhere I wanted to go, everything I wanted to do, and it didn't happen. And I got really down during my second day. Um, so basically plan it with an idea of what you'd like to do, and then look at it like this is just an adventure and wherever the road takes you is where you're gonna go. Um, not everything has to be off-road gravel. I saw some beautiful countryside in North Georgia that people just don't see. You know, you jump on the highway, you jump on the interstate, you bypass all this stuff. Getting back there on the back roads and driving down it was a trip. I mean, the farmland, the mountains, the chalets. I mean, you'll be driving in the middle of nowhere down some gravel road, turn a corner, and there's a half a million dollar chalet sitting there just out of the blue. Go away, B. Go away. Um... So don't get caught up so much in where you want to go. Enjoy the journey getting there. Um, like I said, this is not an epic off-road adventure. This is just an adventure. If you want an epic off-road adventure, go to Winrock, rent a cabin or camp up there for two or three days and just go four-wheeling. Um, this is more, you know, loading up your vehicle and just setting out and wherever the road takes you, it takes you. Um, second thing is really provisioning. Um, you're never really far from civilization, but you can be if something happens. So make sure you take plenty of food, plenty of water. Um, obviously your camping gear is a plus depending on what time of the year you're going to be out. Uh, make sure you're prepared for, for less than ideal weather. Um, the weekend I chose to go, beautiful, sunny, barely a cloud in the sky. However, the temperatures got colder than I thought they would. Um, and I mean by 10 degrees colder. Um, all the, the planning ahead I did trying to figure out, you know, when uh, the temperature was going to drop or when it would start creeping back up. I don't like really hot, warm days and nights. I like to go out in the fall, early, early spring. Um, so what I was banking on was hoping it would be 50s, 60s during the day and maybe 40 at night. What I landed on was 50 during the day, 25 to 30 at night. So the first night was a little, little long, but I made it. I brought plenty of blankets and stuff to keep warm with. Um, you know, make sure, you know, like I said, you know, all you, the camping gear you typically want to bring. Um, it's a good idea to go ahead and bring some firewood. You can find enough laying around to help, you know, with kindling and getting things going. Um, but uh, definitely get some firewood from the area uh, so you can, you know, have a nice fire at night. Um, there are plenty of places to pull off and, and camp. Um, one of the nice things about the maps that David has is it shows a lot of possible campsites. And there's plenty, um, you know, sometimes as many as five or six within a mile. So it's, uh, you know, it's one of those things, just, you know, find a good spot and stop. Um, if it's windy, um, pay attention to the terrain, um, especially this time of year. You don't want to be at the top of a peak in the wind during fire season, um, you know, because it's, it's fairly dry right now. Um, 
So I, I did try to shoot for camping areas that were more in the lower areas uh, and ended up finding a great spot by the river. Um, uh, didn't see a lot of people this time of the year in March. Uh, I saw a ton around Charlie's Creek, but not very many outside of that. Um, so, you know, provisioning, you know, if you're experienced enough with camping and stuff, you kind of know what to bring. Um, however, you're doing this out of a vehicle. So, you know, make sure that you've got things strapped down, uh, make sure everything's got a place and it's in it. Um, you will get bounced around on a lot on some of these trails. They're not very smooth. They're passable. They're just not nice, smooth gravel. Um, so everything I've got in my Jeep is basically strapped down with the ratchet straps or, or, uh, or cinch straps. Um, cause if something does happen, you don't want everything to go airborne in your car. Um, let's see. Um, some other things, uh, get an idea of kind of what you'd like to see. Um, and then slow down and smell the roses. Um, there's a lot of great trails off of the Georgia Traverse. The Traverse is basically the main route, but once you get on it, there's a lot of neat things to see that are sometimes just a few yards off. Uh, I saw some great waterfalls, um, some nice, uh, you know, little short hiking trails. Um, the, the areas that are, you know, some of the towns are kind of neat um, that you'll go through. Like I said, Helen is a trip. Um, definitely worth a little short short drive down there although I did go when it was apparently really busy um, but uh, the architecture and stuff there is pretty fun um, and then so uh, basically um, provisions camping gear plan your trip don't worry about it if you get off of it because here's what happened to me once I got done camping the first night got up packed on my gear headed out it was basically um, between where I camped in Chattahoochee Recreation, or the you know the, the larger um, forest, everything was closed. Every road I started to turn down was closed. Some of, one of them I knew about. The others, I had not seen anything about them as far as closures. I don't know if I just missed it um, or what, but I, I struggled. I had to do a lot of rerouting around some places, um, and some of it was stuff that I'd like I would have liked to have seen. Um, so I got a little bit discouraged there. Um, once I started working my way up around the loop that goes around Chattahoochee Oconee, or Oconee, I think it's Chattahoochee Oconee, um, I got a really good far distance. And right about the top of it, when you get into Tennessee and start coming around, the road was closed. Um, again, did not know about that one, hadn't heard of it. Actually, I had a friend that went through there not a week ago, and he said there was nothing wrong. Um, but the road was closed and I understand it may be for some prescribed burns in the area But the problem with the closure there is there's not an easy route around it and pick it back up I would have either had to have gone further into Tennessee all the way around and then drop back down Which would have taken me hours and hours or I would have had to backtrack pretty much um, All the way to the east of it and then try to come all the way back around south because I did know that the road is closed through this one campground and you can't get around to the other side so it, the only option was to go north so I would have had to have gone all the way back around the south of it all the way around almost to the west end and then pick it back up with which was really just the last little bit through Dalton and then into Alabama which didn't seem enjoyable to me um, so I basically stopped my traverse there and drove north and uh, went into Teleco Plains um, and then uh, spent the evening in um, Sitico Creek uh, before I took off for the rest of the day. Um, so my, my trip was cut a little bit short. Uh, I will say I enjoyed the heck out of the first half of it. Um, even though I've, I ran into some more closures than I've liked, I did make the best of it. Um, so again, you know, be ready to kind of roll with the punches. Um, and you may not get done with it your first try. You know, I'm definitely going to come back down pick up where I left off, do the rest of it once I know everything's back open. Um, probably do that in the fall because um, I'm not real wild about being down there in the summer with all the uh, the traffic because it, it's gotten, the Georgia Traverse has gotten popular and there's tons of people that do it. You're going to find tons of video on YouTube about I did the Georgia Traverse and stuff like that. Um, but uh, hopefully as we've talked, you know, you've kind of enjoyed some of the highlights that I found. Um, so let's talk about vehicles. Um, I would say 80% of the Georgia Traverse could be done in any typical vehicle with a little bit of clearance. Um, I say that because even some of the better roads um, will have some rutted out areas, some 
some washed out areas and things like that and it's not really necessarily a place you want to take the family sedan through you could it's just not something i would do um there is there are some areas though that are that that do require more so charlie's creek for example um, that that portion of the trail you need a high clearance vehicle with four-wheel drive preferably a low range and a limited slip or a locker would go a long way um, you know for me you don't necessarily have to have a locker or limited slip but it will help and it will help prevent damage to the trail um, that trail is getting heavy 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 usage um, I, I did talk to a ranger as I was coming in and he mentioned that uh, he was seeing in some of the the weekends as many as two or three large groups of vehicles go through in a weekend easily um, it's really popular because it's got a really great stream crossing it does have some more challenging four-wheel drive sections and so it is become a magnet with the four-wheel drive clubs um, however it is starting to get I would I would almost say damage done to the trail um, that if they're not careful may not be reversible um, I would expect it might not be too long before you either see it closed for repairs or closed for a while um, and as you know um, once a trail is closed it's really hard to get it back open so if you do go through there um, please follow tread lightly um, guidelines um, do as little to the to the trail as possible don't stack you know stones and logs and stuff like that to get through a section um, you shouldn't need to unless you just take the wrong vehicle um, but that is really the one section you should have a capable four-wheel drive vehicle and a little bit of skill so you know which lines to pick and things like that uh, Trey Mountain's another one that I think um, you probably do need a high clearance four-wheel drive for I didn't get to do it unfortunately but um, from what I've read you do need something more substantial but the rest of it you know Subaru Honda Pilot um, some of your you know all-wheel drive um, small SUVs um, just about anything can get through almost the majority of it um, the biggest thing about vehicles make sure it's well maintained and it's in good shape um, you're never um, that far from civilization but you are going to be in areas that are a long walk out and there is no cell service so make sure your vehicle is maintained before you start traveling the traverse um, and if you do have a problem or start feeling a problem stop and have it looked at before you venture further because again if you break down in the wrong area it's a miles long hike to get out um, or even to even get close to cell service so keep those things in mind um, uh, with that that's um, I, I think most of the tips and tricks I have I'll leave some links um, below uh, to some of the things I used um, specifically the georgiaoverland.com um, as far as a disclosure nothing I've said about vehicles or things like that it should be taken as law um, this is just suggestion do what you will um, however uh, make sure you stay within your limitations um, but i hope you've enjoyed the video hope you've learned something from it uh, if you have uh, hit subscribe like all that good stuff um, uh, we'll, we'll be putting out some more content over the next few months as some different adventures we do um, have nemo tunnel coming up as well um, but uh, appreciate uh, appreciate y'all watching and uh, catch us next time